The next few minutes, we're going to talk about city resilience and what the UN is doing to increase that worldwide. My name is Amy Hodler. I'm the evangelist at Relational AI. Uh, I'm also a huge fan of anything to do with graphs and network science, which are very applicable to resiliency and cities in general. Now, first, I want to say um, it's quite a large problem. Uh, 26 million people are pushed into poverty every year by natural disasters. Uh, and beyond just a lack of uh, tools and uh, capacity or shortage of funding, one of the key bottlenecks is having guidance that's tailored to local context and local needs. So the UN, uh, the UN Habitat is working with partners to build more inclusive, safe, resilient, sustainable cities, uh, and they define uh, urban resilience as the measurable ability of any urban system with the people in it to maintain continuity through all shocks and stresses and adapt towards more sustainability. Uh, Relational AI is proud to be one of the partners uh, with the UN Habitat Group and the UN uh, Office of Information and Communications Technology. Uh, they have a established methodology for risk and vulnerability assessments that starts with understanding complete context, then uh, looking at risks, priorities, and recommending actions. But unfortunately, it's a manual process, which means it's not scalable and it lacks standardization. Um, also, another problem is the effects of shocks and stresses are quite complex. So analyzing uh, the situation for optimal results is difficult and you have a lot of unknown unknowns. And in fact, I think complexity is at a root of um, a lot of the problems. Uh, and the magnitude of the problem is expressed through this quote. It can take up to two years to do an assessment for a city, and there are 40,000 cities in the world. So it's a huge problem, and we need to figure out a way to automate and to scale. And that means tackling complexity. And complexity, you can think about um, complex interactions. So exa for example, with a flood, it's not just about drainage, but also about soil capacity and terrain. And then there are ripple effects. So for example, once floodwaters recede, health issues actually can rise quite significantly. Hypothermia, animal bites, um, carbon monoxide poisoning, or just disruptive health services. It also requires domain expertise. So that can further complicate the ability to automate systems. And then we have uh, unexpected behavior. So oftentimes small changes or small influences can have outsized impacts. So being able to see that and understand those patterns is very important. Now, with these in mind, uh, the UN Habitat looked to knowledge graphs to tackle that complexity. To improve assessments, they knew they had to understand the dependencies better. They had to be able to do what-if analysis. They had to be able to automate while keeping humans in the loop and scale and enhance the system over time. And so they chose a relational knowledge graph. And it, if you're not familiar with the knowledge graph, basically think of it as a way to capture relationships, hierarchies, and meaning. Now, what relational AI added on top of that was this ability to have composable logic with the data. And that means that your model is the program itself. So think about it as having executable knowledge uh, uh, components. And you can imagine how that helps with automation. And having that logic provides reasoning and causal inference. And then also the ability to do simulation and counterfactuals helps with what-if analysis. And then a declarative and expressive approach makes it easier for domain experts to understand and update logic, and you can generate code from the modeling itself. And then, of course, doing that more efficiently means less code, which helps with ongoing automation and maintenance. And then, of course, with the relational backend and architecture, uh, the ability to scale uh, is easier, and the ability to integrate into common workflows uh, is also simpler. So the UN Habitat uh, goal was to develop decision support tools for urban planners and make those risk assessments scalable through automation. And relational AI was able to help with two core elements of that. So the tools of an investigative knowledge system to answer hard questions and uh, do counterfactuals in simulation so you could explore uh, alternatives and actually source information um, from public and local sources. And they had a five-step um, process to get to City Resilience Profiling Tool or tools, uh, starting with 
understanding the um, hierarchies and meaning that ontology for shocks and stresses, then doing sta uh, standardization of indicators for stress, uh, codifying uh, the de urban development expert knowledge, and then working on reasoning and tooling. And I'm, I'm very happy to say the team is in the phase of tooling and reasoning. Uh, and I've got two sneak peeks to show you uh, some of the tools that uh, we're jointly developing. So first is a risk inve investigation system, and that's all about modeling shocks on cities. And you can see I've got a little orange highlight over uh, shock impact. And we, the goal here is really to use this knowledge graph with logic to answer these questions, these complex questions like, uh, what are the highest risks? What causes the most impact? Which elements and components of the city are affected by something like a flood? Uh, and then look at indicators. So here, indicators are about uh, representing how resilient a component. So basically an assessment of resilience of a component like a water pipe or a dam. Uh, and then say, you know, what are the alternatives that might actually change the risk? What is that counterfactual? And then what are the relationships between the shocks themselves? Like, are there a chain of events of shocks and one shock cause another? And then what are the second and third level effects? So things that are affected that may ripple into um, other effects, uh, for, say like a, a flood. And another area to, another tool to take, that, that we can take a look at is probabilistic simulation. So in simulation for flooding, for example, there are several factors you take into account. Uh, you would look at uh, the flow of water uh, for a road segment in proportion to the elevation of adjacent road segments. Maybe you would look at rainfall water uh, in a segment is proportional to the larger area. Uh, you'd look at things like water absorption uh, at a certain rate. And then you'd have things like probabilistic factors like rainfall, uh, you know, over time, intensity over time, and the river level over time. Now, knowledge graphs, you may be hearing some, some common themes here. Now, knowledge graphs are actually a, a more human way to understand these relationships. So if we think about water flow, we were just talking about, it's really a differential um, way to do mathematical simulation. So it's really just a differential equation. Uh, and so if we think about differential equations, they are really simply a defined relationships. And so we can use a knowledge graph structure uh, to do agent-based modeling that propagates based on properties. And so knowledge graphs are a much more intuitive uh, way to read uh, the logic and uh, to tweak parameters based on evidence. Maybe you're trying to un, un, trying to explain some unexpected finding, um, do probabilistic causes, or explore possible changes. And then with a knowledge graph, it's also easier to add in information so you can increase accuracy over time, and in, and in particular, locally source contextually appropriate information um, so you can improve that model. So with that, that was just a couple uh, sneak peeks of uh, what relational AI is working on to support the UN Habitat. Uh, UN Habitat helping communities increase their resilience with knowledge graphs by understanding vulnerabilities holistically, uh, uncover difficult to see obscure risks and solutions, and prioritize uh, with limited resources. Now, if you haven't heard of relational AI, we've just come out of stealth with uh, several uh, enterprise deployments. Uh, we have an office headquarters in Berkeley, but we're 100% remote. Uh, we've got about 100 team members, 29 nationalities, uh, and a lot of um, academic publications uh, and, and awards that we're very proud of. Uh, if you're interested uh, in joining a team that loves to speak geek, uh, let us know. Uh, reach out to me. Uh, you can also find us on relational.ai. Now, to find more information on what we just spoke about, uh, there is a virtual workshop that you can actually get your hands on some of these models on May 3rd at the Knowledge Graph Conference. Go to knowledgegraph.tech. Uh, if you want to find more information about the UN Habitat and the Urban Resilience Hub that they are working on, go to urbanresiliencehub.org. And of course, if you're interested in getting early access to relational AI, check out our web website, relational.ai. Uh, thank you again. I appreciate your time.